If only he could hold meaning in his hands, he thought. If only meaning were that solid, had matter. Unlike thought, which seemed so light, meaning had gravity, a sense of weight. Perhaps not easily measured, but nevertheless a weight and a form. It was graspable. He imagined taking a thought, any thought, folding it as he would a piece of paper, compressing it until it became meaning. Then holding that meaning in his hand, feeling its concreteness, its measure. Afterwards, then slowly unfolding it wide open again, until meaning was no longer there, gone, and his earlier thought had reappeared. Or perhaps another thought with which he could start the whole process of folding and unfolding all over again. He wondered why meaning was always smaller than thought. What happened in the shrinking transfer from one to the other? Did the shift of thought to meaning open up another kind of gain? Or was that transfer with the passing of time simply the gaining of weight? He knew that time was important in this exchange, yet could not see how. Time was too big, distant, remote even, to be held in any space meaning might occupy. It was so much bigger than space. And anyway, time never settled, never committed to one place. It was always just passing through. Time and time again, like his piece of paper, he tried to fold the thought, to give it weight. Compressed, it now had meaning, yet strangely was displaced outside of time. He held it in his hand, feeling its weight, observing its form. Then slowly he began to prise open the parcel of meaning. Now open he waited, waited time for time to become thought again. About a mile from where we live runs a meandering stream. At the point where the road crosses the stream, an old bridge spans it. When the children were young, we frequently went there to play poo sticks, each person choosing a stick, usually a twig from the neighboring hedgerow. Then with everyone lined up on one side of the bridge, on the count of three, the twigs were dropped into the flowing stream below. The winner was the one whose stick appeared on the opposite side of the bridge first. Choosing the right stick, guessing the best line of flow in the stream, set against whether or not you were placed higher up the arc of the bridge. Winning was not as easy as it sounds. <laughs>